Hey, welcome back to This Is Gravel here on Gravel Guru, and we are back doing some video, Neil. We are. We're in the studio with cameras. I don't believe it, Matt. Right? We're, we're <laughs> back here. We're back in the studio. Uh, just over the last couple weeks, events, had a lot of people say, you know, we miss we miss seeing you on YouTube. Well, they like the look of my face. What can I say? Yeah, I, I guess that must be what it is. It's, it's sure not me. But <laughs> anyways, we're back here in the studio and uh, looking to get more video going over the next month. Uh, really enjoying it. Yeah, there's a lot coming up uh, for both of us. A lot of things obviously going on. Obviously, there's a big event here in about six weeks uh, in Emporia that I'm sure we'll talk plenty about as well. Uh, but I like the video aspect. I mean, we do like the podcast. We love that audio. I think that was fun and convenient. Uh, but as you mentioned, whether it was at Mid-South or just conversations that I've yeah. had with people in general, uh, folks miss the video aspect too of the show. And so mm -hmm. um, I'm looking forward to plugging some of that back in well we've got a great interview coming up a little bit later a little bit later in the show here with uh bobby thompson who i don't i've never heard of that guy right before. yeah well, did, did he host the show for five years yeah he hosted this for quite a while so we'll have that coming up later but what have you been up to personally neil oh man it has been uh a lot of actually finally getting back on the bike it seems like you know we talk about riding a lot and then i look at my miles and they just aren't there and so um, I have made a very conscious effort over the past month to get my mileage back up since we came back from spring break with the family uh, to really at least try to get out there and get 100 miles each week. Um, I've also been uh, plugging in some <coughs> running um, as well. Uh, yeah. Uh, my, my, my mileage seems to be like peaks and then valleys and like vast valleys and large peaks. Like when I go ride, I have a week. That is fantastic mileage wise, and then I seem to forget where all my bikes are. Yeah, like that's how I would describe my riding so far this year. Like I'm not disappointed with where I'm at mileage wise, but there's been big weeks, and then there's been like weeks like if I would have just plugged in a few more miles there, I'd, I'd be in great shape. Life is busy, man. Like there's a lot going on for both of us. Um, we both have families, both got jobs, and. It's sometimes tough to plug in those miles, especially when you don't really have something to focus. And then I, I remind myself that I'm two months away uh, from coast to coast and 200 miles up in Michigan, yeah. and I probably need to be riding my bike a little bit more. And so uh, that definitely has helped me get focused. And then I've got a lot of uh, you know other events, too, coming up as well. I uh, just actually signed up for another local one here that starts, what, 500 feet away from where we're sitting right now, the grind probably, here in Emporia. Yeah. I mean, uh, and so I'm I'm... I'm looking That's forward to that. May third and fourth. Yes, May. Uh, okay. Yeah. So it's 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 right here around the corner. Yeah. It'll be a couple weekends from now. So yeah, you talk about just being busy and like I'm in the struggle of. You probably saw if you you watch our social media at all. I posted a f video of my daughter earlier this week, uh, sitting on the stairs, you know, waving goodbye type thing on the ride. And like, let me tell you the difference of like, the first two years ago she was six months old in the ride season. And then she's a year and a half. But at two and a half, they want to be out doing things. Mm -hmm. They want to be involved and like. It's a completely different level. Though I have to tell you, last night, she kicked me out of the house and told me to go ride my bike. She's like, <laughs> Daddy, go ride your bike. And I really think it comes down to she likes the bell. I always ring my bell on the handlebars when I roll out. And I think that's why she wanted me to ride, because I think she was kind of disappointed that I then actually went and rode. But, you know. You know what? It, whatever it takes to get on the bike, if she likes hearing the bell, and that's motivation, she says, Dad, go ride. I mean, if she says, Dad, go ride, what? What can I you mean, do? You, ha you, you have you, to go. You got to go ride. So, yeah. anyways, trying to get some miles in. Uh, built up a, a geared niner as well. So I have a single speed steel niner and a geared steel niner. Matt's back with gears, folks. Yes. You know, I, I will say this much. I, I I really really still like the single speed. I get it. Um, hundred percent. If we ride tonight with Thursday night ride, uh, I'll probably be on the geared bike tonight just to shift down and have some fun. And with the wind we've had in Kansas lately. I, I will say gears have been needed. Yeah, like, it's it's been crazy. It's been unreal windy. I'm I'm ready for the wind to be over, but I know that when the wind's over, a lot of times that means summer's here and, and the heat. The heat and humidity can come up at that point when the wind quits blowing. And, uh, you know, the Kansas wind is a great equalizer out here. I think people don't realize, yeah, we don't have mountain ranges. We don't have deserts. Like, but... You talked to anybody that was here over the Unbound Camp, and also I had uh, some friends in from Colorado. Mindy came in with some of her friends, uh, and we rode bikes, and, you know, all these folks come out here. And, I mean, some of her friends that rode, rode last year in the mud and had great, you know, 200s, and then they came out here and they rode in that wind, and we're like, yeah, this is totally different. This is not the same. And, and that wind really... Uh, 
can can punch you in the face. And yeah, it and can. It's oof. <laughs> yep. So it, it's been a good spring, though. 100%. You know, those of us that know how the weather patterns work out here, it's like last night I got out and got a good ride in. But it, it's kind of you get out towards the end of the day. We know the wind should die down closer to sunset out there. Mm-hmm. Get miles in when you can. And uh, the other part is you just kind of dig deep and go ride your bike. 100%. And that's what I'm that's what I've been doing here over the last few weeks. Just getting out mm-hmm. riding, forcing myself to do it. And uh, I'm thankful for it. 100%. Speaking of being thankful, uh, last weekend there was an event. Yeah. Uh, Bobby Thompson threw the Flint Hills gravel ride up in America's Kansas. So uh, we actually had a chance to get him back in the studio. So anyways, with that, uh, let's cut to an interview we just did with Bobby Thompson. How are you doing, Bobby? Good. How are you guys doing? I'm Both great, but I'm shocked. Neil, I didn't know Matt. this guy was here anymore. <laughs> Am I seeing things? No, no, we're not seeing anything, but Bobby's been a busy guy. He is. Bobby, coming off the weekend with Flint Hills Gravel up in America's Kansas, how are you doing? I'm doing good. I'm finally recovered. Today, the brain is almost, well, for me, as fully functional as it gets. But uh, yeah, I feel good. Physically, I feel good. Yeah. So we, we were talking last night when you came into the bike shop. It's been a while since you've been on the show, but you hosted the first four seasons, I think? First five four, seasons? Four or five. five. I yeah. thought it was five. He's okay. all the way up to episode 100. I know yeah, that. I think it was five. And then... I think we last hosted one like April of 2020, wasn't it? Was yeah. It, was it the pandemic or was it just out of the pandemic or just before the pandemic? It was right there in the midst of the yeah. pandemic, I think. The- yeah, I think so. Because I did a couple of podcasts. My last like podcast was yeah. uh, right before XL, the canceled year. And yeah. then I just kind of stopped doing that. So yeah, I bet it was right around that time. So you've done a lot, though, in this last couple of years. This was actually the fourth running a Flint Hills gravel ride, yeah. and with Discover Gravel. Kind of give us an overview about what Discover Gravel is and kind of how you've gotten to year four. Yeah, so Discover Gravel, I mean, the name was immediate, but the actual um, umbrella company, Discover Gravel, took off about six months after the first Flint Hills Gravel. Um, I needed an LLC, and I, didn't, I knew Flint Hills Gravel wasn't going to be the only thing I was going to do, so I needed more of a parent. So Discover Gravel came along, and now we have... Flint Hills Gravel in America's Kansas. We have Rock Ridge Gravel in Alma, uh, Kansas. Well, Wabunsee. I'm going to say Wabunsee. It starts in Alma, but it's a Wabunsee-based event. And then we have, uh, last year we debuted a 1,050-mile bikepacking ultra event. Um, all in the Flint Hills. I'm all, all about showing off our Flint Hills and um, the history behind the Flint Hills. And then we, two years ago, three, yeah, Two years ago, this will be the third year, we have a fundraising uh, mountain bike race in town called Tricks and Trails um, for our mountain bike NICA team. So, yeah, it's been busy. I also started a 501c3 fund last year to help with costs, uh, NICA costs, um, youth sports costs. There's maintenance costs with bikes and all that. And so to kind of reduce the barrier of entry for kids into, into biking. So what you're saying is you have a lot of free time. Yeah, what I'm saying is I, sh- my, I, I should probably go sell more houses instead of, instead of doing this. It's a little bit more lucrative, mm-hmm. but uh, that's, the, that's my real job. So. So, so my question to you then, I guess, you know, you've been into bikes a long time. Do you remember what year you did your first event in gravel cycling as a participant? Yeah, 2011 is the first year I did the, at that time, Dirty Kansas 200. I just jumped right in. Okay. That was my first event. Was so the 200. how do you go and what makes you with the drive from, you know, starting these events as a participant to go on, I want to create my own? Uh, you've been around a while <laughs> and um, you're passionate about it. And there's things, you know, it's not like you go to events and you say you, you go to them thinking they did this wrong, but you go to events and you walk away thinking that was a great event but I would have liked to have done this. And you do that enough. And over the years, you kind of want to do your own thing and and try it out. And that's why I started Flint Hills Gravel. Uh, One of the reasons, the other reason was, I mean, let's face it, we all, or a lot of us after the year of the pandemic, I mean, we were all grounded at home. We were around our family a lot more. Um, I noticed my girls were getting (laughs) quite a bit older, very fast. And I didn't want to travel and ride bikes elsewhere as much. I wanted to do more things here. I knew this would ground me here every spring, and it has. So, yeah, that that was a big part of it. So when you when you think about Flint Hills Gravel, let's just look at that. We did have that obviously this past weekend. 
I mean, I, if I remember correctly, back in 2020 and 2021, leading up to that first event, you were originally hoping for about 250, and now you've been 750 plus the last few years. So what, what do you make of the, the growth of the event really over, I mean, over four years, because I think even that first year you expanded because it sold out almost instantaneously. So what's, what's your thought about the growth that it's experienced here over these four years? Yeah, well, the first year, if you remember, we had uh, tight restrictions. Yeah. Um, so I had to work a lot with the uh, local health agencies, and we were restricted at first to 150. Um, and I do think that I was timing the first year. I mean, we were all looking to do something, right? Because yeah. it was uh, December when I announced, November when I announced it. So we were all looking for something. Um, so, I mean, obviously that helped, but I think it was – time for just some some something new in, in the spring that first year and everyone was excited so we were allowed to grow from 150 to 250 to a soft 300 and we had about 280 the first year um so i, I don't know what we could have done without restrictions i don't know if it yeah. would have been higher or not but i wasn't looking for anything i mean i was looking i was hoping we'd get 100 and when i started doing the numbers that i wanted to do i knew that <laughs> i needed one to 150 to to not so my mm -hmm. wife wouldn't be mad at me for putting this on right um so then the second year, I had no idea. Yeah. I was hoping for the same. Um, and we ended up getting, I think, like 600 the second year. And then last year, and we're talking registered. Yeah. You know, I, um, <clears throat> and then this third year, we had 790. Um, this year, we had 760. So I, I'm happy anywhere above 500 now. And that makes me really excited yeah. when I see that number hit, but I'm still the, I still get nervous every year at when we launch mm -hmm. registration, I still get nervous until we get over that hundred mark. Yeah. So it's not like I expect anything. I, I'm, I'm humbled every year that it starts growing and growing and growing. So, so we, we talked about this when you launched the event, I know, but why America's Kansas for Flint Hills gravel? Oh, that was easy. I grew up in America's. Um, I like the roads around America. So the roads meant something to me. And so during, again, I, I say this a lot, but it was a lot had, had to do with the pandemic. So I was able to go out and ride bikes and still be away from people. And so I rode a lot around my hometown on my old roads. And um, you start to remember the passion that you had as a kid riding these old roads. And mm -hmm. I have memories on all those roads. I mean, good memories and bad memories growing up as a kid. So that was, the, that was the easy part. The other part is, um, I'm from Emporia. I love Emporia, but as a gravel cyclist to get to the fun stuff, it's yeah. a good <laughs> 15 to 20 miles to get to the fun stuff. Right. Mm -hmm. um, we have beautiful ag roads around Emporia, but to get to the, to the nasty rocks and all that kind of stuff, so America's is a little bit closer launching point I, to I, a lot of that. I really like 90% of my miles from the year being in the flat river plains just south of town, though. Let's be clear on <laughs> yeah, that. Yeah, no, so. no, I understand. Yeah. No, every <laughs> ride you do goes to opium back, so I know I get it. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and I love, you know, when I went on get, get out there and cruise, I love my heart for rides. So it's the same thing. We go right along the yeah. river over there. But um, well, Why do you think I ride single speed? Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, exactly. Um, but... It, America's is a great launching point. They have a they have a great bar there, Harry and Lloyd's uh, Bar and Grill, um, and they have been extremely friendly to work with. You know, I had I won't say lost contacts, but definitely the contacts that I had in high school were no longer there. Yeah. But I still knew the names and I still knew the people. And so, oh. uh, I was just gonna say for for the event as I look at the event, um, I find it at least unique in the fact that. It has something for everybody. Like, whatever you want, Flint Hills Gravel seems to have. I it, mean, you've got the family ride that took place this year for, for the first time, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. But then you've got a really nice kind of entry-level 30. you got this just breakness, breakneck-paced 80-miler, it seems like, where people just right. push themselves. And then you throw to the crazies out there, like myself last year, and say, hey, go 120, and you don't know where you're going. Enjoy with the cue cards. And that was... For me, last year, that was insane because I hadn't cue carded anything since 2015. And so talk a little bit about just the, the differences because you do have something that, you know, I saw kids that were probably younger than my son out there riding, you know, on the course when we were running the 5K this year. And then obviously you got people going out doing 100 and almost 30 miles this year, having no idea where the route's going to take them. Yeah, we had a 12-year-old absolutely crush the... 85-ish mile ride this wow. year. Um, and that's 
So that's that. I guess that's the point. As I try not to focus on the age, I try to for, focus more on just offering up the the different options and then letting the riders choose themselves, but having enough options that you can choose. Yeah. Um, there's no way you're going to meet everybody's expect expectations. I started off with a 35 miler and an, and an 85 miler is what I started off with the first year. And my thought process was not every ride has to be a hundred. I can make, I can put as many feet of climbing in an 85 as I can a hundred and the 85 sounded kind of a sub century sounded kind of fun. Yeah. So that's why I started off with that. The reason I had the 35 starting off with was I thought, well, that's a great mile to challenge yourself. But over the years, now the next year, everyone clamored for more 120. And I thought, well, I'll give you a 120, but I still want the 85 to be the core race, the big yeah. event. So let's do a 120, but let's make it like the old days where you just had a cue card. Um, now, again, in the old days, you also had a map on the backside. I don't even do that. You have <laughs> zero idea where you're going. You show up at the start line the day of, and I say, okay, everybody, you're going to face, let's face west. You face west. And I hand you your first cue card that gets you about 30 to 40 miles. Um, right turn on road 180, left turn on B, right turn at so-and-so's house. No, it's not that bad, but um, most of the roads are well marked yep. um, around this area. So it's able to do that. And um, I take a lot of care to make sure those are right. Um, the first year I had one wrong turn. And the funny thing <laughs> was it was a wrong turn at a T intersection Left was a gravel road, right was a field with an open gate that just happened to be there. And everybody assumed that's where Bobby wanted them to go. So they went into this open field, got to the end, and they realized they were in an enclosed field. Probably because right. they saw some of the roads. That yeah, you right. They were the like, event. well, Bobby meant for us to go this way. So they all had to turn around. So it was like a, a bunch of lemmings, and they just hit this one side. So I now take great care in making sure that those are right. What? And yeah. this year, so uh, real quick, so then last year I noticed that both my events, the America's one and the Alma one, both of them had a local kid who was hanging around with me the day before, and he just wanted to know everything about the event. And I thought, well, wait a minute, this local kid has a BMX bike style bike from Walmart. Um, there's no way he's going to come out and do 35 miles. Yeah. But this is who I want yeah. to get on the bikes, right? Yeah. So this year we did a free local bike ride with the help of a local sponsor, uh, Michael Reynolds, Dr. Michael Reynolds. And they were able, so those free four mile riding kids were able to still get the same t shirt, bib plate, finishing prize That's cool. as everybody else. So That's they awesome. were just a normal rider out there riding their bikes and they had a lot of fun. Yeah, they seemed like they were in a blast. Like I said, they were on the same route as we were for the 6k and i mean they every single one of them was smiling you know yeah. and just seemed to have a great time so it was really really cool to see you know as we wrap up talking about Flint Hills gravel ride before we get into some of your other events you know you're coming off the weekend it's thursday morning this is going out on friday so almost a week removed from it now what is your favorite part of the entire weekend you know what's okay i love the 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 right thing to say would be, I love to see the smiles and everything coming across people's faces across the event. And I do love that. But the reality of the situation is because it's a 700 person event and I'm me, um, I tend to be the whole day running mm -hmm. and not putting out fires. Cause that sounds like it's a negative thing, but addressing issues all day long. Go, 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 go. Oh wait, he's so go, go, oh, go ahead. So it's really hard to just stand there and greet everybody. So I will say actually the favorite part of the event is when the event is starting to wind down in the afternoon. It's four or five o'clock. Uh, people are coming through because they've been spread out so far. Mm -hmm. Now we're towards mm -hmm. the back of the pack, um, the middle of the adventure, the long distance pack. And I get to relax and sit down and the sun's starting to set behind us. The temperature's starting to fade and the, the winds died down <laughs> finally. <laughs> and I get that personal greeting one-on-one -on -one with the remainder of the field. And it's just a, such a a calming and the, and the busy part of the day is gone so it's just such a calming effect at the end yeah. of the day and i really really look forward to that and enjoy that the other time is about 5 a.m 4 30 a.m race day morning i get up i get my coffee i know that everybody is in their hotel rooms or bedrooms getting ready they all have nervous stomachs they're all drinking their coffee and it's just me and i can walk up and down and, you know you, you look at all the banners and everything you're like well, this is this is pretty cool so that's a good moment. Yeah, absolutely. Following the calendar now, the Ultra's coming up. That's your next event coming up. 
Give us a little bit of a background on what the Flint Hills Ultra is. Yeah. And and maybe what it's not. And uh, yeah, just, just fill us in on this one. So the Ultra is, I realized like in year two that I love the Flint Hills, but I've only seen the Flint Hills where the Unbound 200 has taken us. Yeah. So I wanted to see what else was out there. And so I pulled up maps of the ecological barriers, boundaries of the Flint Whoa. Hills. I know it's a big word, right? <laughs> Did you know I'm a, I'm a wildlife biology major? I just never used it. Uh, so anyway, I pulled up the e- ecological boundaries of the Flint Hills and I re- you know, they dip all the way down to almost Pahuska, Oklahoma, Osage Hills in Oklahoma, but it's the same, it's the same thing. Um, and it goes all the way up to Blue Rapids in Kansas. So I thought, that's a lot of awesome roads that I don't know anything about. So um, I got in the Jeep, started driving them, and then you start researching the, the history of the small towns and everything. And it's like, you know what? I want to show all this off. I want to do something that may only get four or five people. It may get nobody. I don't care. I'm driving all these roads. And I did. For about nine months, I got out there. And uh, there'd be some days where, you know, my wife has that find a phone, mm-hmm. find a friend or whatever on the iPhone. And I dropped my daughter off at eight at school. And then I would just drive and I'd get a call. Why are you in Cali County, Kansas at 2, 8, 2 p.m. in the afternoon? What, what are you doing down there? Uh, I don't know. The Jeep just kind of took me here. <laughs> and then you look at the thing. You're like, holy moly, I got to pick up Nora at four o'clock. So you just fly back as fast as you can. And that's what I <laughs> off and on did for Because, you know, real estate agent. So I can carry my computer in my pocket. Um, so, yeah, I did that for nine months. And there's a lot of beautiful country out there and wonderful towns so um so that's where the tour does it takes you through all of that so talk to us about the structure is it a race is it an adventure is it so first and foremost it's a tour of the flint hills that can be ridden on public roads any day of the year um, by anyone and i will also say it's an excellent driving route so if you don't feel like you want to get out there and bike go drive the flint hills and visit them carry a spare tire (laughs) <laughs> and have a little bit of clearance um, out there. But um, no, it, don't take a smart car. Um, are those still around? They still make smart cars? A little bit? Okay, yeah. Um, so no, it's, it's beautiful out there. But um, so it is a tour first, but on May, the week, Saturday before um, Unbound. So I guess that would be, is that Labor Day weekend? Memorial Day. Memorial Day weekend. Uh, Memorial Day weekend, Saturday is a grand depart that leaves the zoo, which I'm a long time board member of our Emporia Zoo. I love our zoo here in town. It's a great anchor for Emporia. It leaves the zoo and um, yeah, I mean, that's what it is. It's We have a couple of FKTs that were set last year. Um, Ashton Lambie knocked out the men's geared FKT in just over four days, which was absolutely incredible. And he got he got lucky because he beat all the rain that followed all, for the yeah. next two or three days. <laughs> um, like, it just slammed everybody else. Uh, and Trisha came in at just over seven days, but I will say she probably walked at least a day and a half. Um, she dealt with a lot of mud. She dealt with a lot, a lot of mud. So, so yeah, I, I, I'm excited about it. We have some other FKTs that haven't been set yet. I want somebody to go do a relay. Two or four-person relay. I think that would be so much fun to hop in. Uh, bus with your buddies and I just have this 1970s vibe thing going on in my head where you got the good times van and you're rolling down and one dude or and one rider does 150 Matt, miles. Matt doesn't know good times. I know. I, I just I just think <laughs> so, it would be so fun and knock it out, you know? Bobby was telling me about this at the store last night, this idea, and it's kind of stuck with me a little. I think three or four people would be ideal. I, so you could get like four hour shifts going on or something like that on the bike or yeah. eight hour or... But the, the goal is to create traffic out there on these roads, get these towns seen. Um, a longtime candy shop down in Dexter, Kansas. I just read online that it's closing. Um, you know, stuff like that just to support these small towns that, um, that need us down there. Now, it's not like we're going to break any records with five or ten people, but it's just it creates visibility for these towns that are still down, out there. So, And like you said, there's a lot of roads out there. I mean, we've all ridden a lot of miles, and yet I haven't seen yeah. probably even 10% Whoa. of now, I will, I will, I will say, Cali County, I will give credit, um, Elrod's mm-hmm. Cirque mm-hmm. is mm-hmm. down there, uh, Bone Shaker That's rides. the Winfield area, right? That's yep. around the okay. Winfield area, and they do cover a lot of those roads, so I don't want to 
come across as saying I'm introducing all these roads to the yeah. world. But I will say that the roads over by my home area, southeast Kansas, the Chautauqua Hills and those things, those have zero visibility with cyclists. And so those roads are, are beautiful over there also. And those are on the route. Down by Sedan, Kansas. Okay. Yep. Okay. Down by Cedarville. Yeah. I've, I've never explored that. Yeah. And there are no races down there anymore. They used to be a long time ago. But So those are new to a lot of us. So And Pahuska, we don't get down that way, but there is, yeah, um, but there is a race down there. Um, Osage. Yes, thank yep. you. Yep, yep. Um, and that is down there also. Yeah, I mean, it kind of like bookends some of the great races. Through, yeah, and it goes throughout. up to Marysville, which is yeah. Pony Express. Yeah. So absolutely, it just ties everything together. Yeah, very so. cool. That's a cool passion project. I think you could probably call that one you've been it's working on. It's absolutely a passion. It's a free event. There's, yeah, there's there's no way to create income no off that. No bib numbers, so. no anything. No, 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 no. Maybe someday I'll do tours and offer yeah. a tour thing. Yeah. So, but no. For sure. Very cool on that. Now we're moving into June. Rock Ridge Gravel Up in Wabunsee. June is a is a passion gravel event. Um, when I first started riding bikes, every year we'd go up to Maisie's Pride ride, and we would get our collective rear ends handed to us. <laughs> yeah, I mean, because it was there a, are no flat roads and there is no easy gravel to be ridden up. I there. mean, I covered it the first four four or five years we did uh, Gravel Guru here, and like it was the race that people went into the expectation with. If I do good here today, I'm probably ready for what's coming the first weekend in June. Mm -hmm. And if I don't, I I have a month to get my stuff together. Yeah, you will get no harder riding. I don't care what anybody says in this area, um, all up and down the Flint Hills, than you will in Wabunsee County. Um, Mile for mile, it's the toughest gravel to ride up there. That's why when anybody ever says, oh, the inbound goes north this year, it's tough. That's because it's Wabunsee County. And it is. Yeah, exactly. And it is tough in Wabunsee County. So I I love the Highway 4. I love Highway 99 up there. It just weaves and goes through everywhere, the scenic drives. Um, and that's how the gravel is up there, except it's big, chunky stuff. Um, the town of Alma, I think, is beautiful and amazing um, because it's built in those rugged hills. Mm-hmm. A lot of the buildings were built with limestone. Mm-hmm. and almost all those buildings are still standing versus I love my hometown of Americas, but because it was built in the river bottoms, mm-hmm. it was built with a lot of wood. A lot of those old buildings are gone, but in Alma, they're still there because of the limestone. Um, and they have a thriving downtown because it's really close to Wamigo, Manhattan, Topeka, right off I-70. It's a beautiful area. Well, the area is known. They have like the native stone scenic byway runs 177, 99. Yeah, absolutely. No, 99 up it's through there. It's got the old stone, stone fences, fences and, everything. and the old yeah, absolutely. stone bridges there and just gorgeous countryside. What it, It's amazing that we, where we are sitting in downtown Emporia, we are not that far from there. No, right now, like 45 as the, minutes to an hour. You know, as the crow flies, not that many miles, but mm-hmm. it's amazing how unexplored that area is as well, and just some of the old barns and the history out in that area. It's a very rural county. Last time I looked, I think they have about 7,500 people living in the entire county. So it is a very rural county. So a lot of the, there's no support. You have yeah. to be aware of that. Or, or cell signal and all the Or places. cell <laughs> signal or anything else. So, but it is, uh, you can get out there and just ride all day and not see a car so it's beautiful up there so how many years have you been doing rock ridge or what year will this be this will be the third year in rock ridge last year we had 280 um i think that event should and will always be capped at that three to 350 number i like that size for that town and that Mm -hmm. area um the races we do up there and the time of year we do it up there i think it 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 makes it feel like you're coming home to a picnic in your backyard. And yeah. that's how last year, Lauf um, treated us to, they supplied us as a sponsor with a picnic for everybody um, at the end of the ride. And cool. I, and it felt right. It just felt good. So we'd have it there at the county fairgrounds. Um, we have a 30 miler, we have a 75 miler, and we have a 150 miler. And again, my 150 is different than everybody else's. Um, you start at 9 p.m., and then you finish along with the 75s on the on the road. The fastest person last year finished at 6:30. Kevin White, who's just unreal speed on a single speed, he left after everybody left. He was our timer, so he set up the timing station, let everybody <laughs> roll out, made sure the timing station was working properly. Said Bobby, "Hey, I think we're going to go now." Hopped on his bike, his single speed, and beat everybody by an hour through the night. Yeah, so uh, it was it was pretty cool. Our second place, there was a 16-year-old who just absolutely crushed it. 
Yeah, sixteen out on the roads through the night. Youthful, no fear, man. Absolutely, he just went, he just he just sent it. Um, so that's a really cool way to get through a hot summer night as you ride through the nighttime. Well, and I mean that's pretty typical around here. I think my favorite time once we get through the beginning of June is I love rolling out on the bike at eight p.m. Yeah, catch that last hour of daylight, but roll till nine, ten, eleven, midnight maybe. Yeah, so you do that towers ride. You leave at eight. Oh, you yeah, do the towers ride. You get home at twelve to one. Yeah, I agree. There's not many more beautiful watching the sun set out there because I don't think people realize, like, you got to throw on those hills and how long you can watch the sunset. Yeah. You know, it's not just an immediate thing. And Well, and that's the other thing I've noticed the last two years is when you roll out on that 150, which we call the dark side is what we call it, but you do, you ride into the sunset. Okay. And then yeah. it circles around and you ride into the sunrise <laughs> in the morning. So you both. I'm just not sure personally how I could handle, like, I, and I talked about doing the 150. I don't think it's going to happen this year for me, but... The mental aspect, and we talked about this with the XL and whatnot, too, of watching the sunsets, one thing on the bike, but then watching the sunrise, that 4.30, 5.30 a.m. Yeah. section there that I'm pretty good about shutting off between my ears and just pedaling, but... I try to... I, I, I'll be honest. It's not for me. I tried it one time at Gravel Worlds. Was it called the, like, the Long Voyage? Or something? Yeah, Long yep. Voyage. And you're exactly right. I made it until about 3.30, and I was in the small town... And stopped for water, and they had one of these stoplights, like on the movie cars, mm-hmm. where it just chink, 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 chink. <laughs> and I rolled to the edge of town, and you see nothing but darkness. And I looked at it, went back in town, sat down by the bank, fell asleep, and woke up at four thirty. I mean, I was, I was out, I was done. So yeah. it's tough. That that three thirty to five thirty is a tough range for people. And I think that it, like I say, it poses a totally different challenge for anybody that's going to try to do something. I mean, like that. I mean, we can all go out and ride. I mean, the eighty miler for the most part. I mean, you know, but to ride through the night is a totally different beast because whether it's the lack of visibility. I mean, like it's tough riding in the night because you can't see everything like you can normally. So you have to maybe ride a little bit more cautiously or a little bit more aware. Uh, but when you're out there and it's dark, you don't realize just how dark those hills get. Absolutely. And, well, and oof. my failure at the Long Voyage is actually what led to this event. At the Long Voyage and the XL for Unbound, you ride through the night, but you know you have an entire day of riding ahead of you. Mm-hmm. And that's really, really overwhelming for a person who is challenging himself for the first time. So my thought was, why don't you just cut that back? And the challenge is getting through the night. And by the time you get through the night, you're almost done. And even that, though, is such a challenge. Right, really exactly. Is. So that is the challenge of this, is being able to ride through the night. I, I think it benefits, and this is just me. <clears throat> I, mean, I haven't done it before, and me and Matt have talked about doing it, but Matt's over there shaking his head a little <laughs> bit, saying, I don't think so. But I, I think what makes this at least a little bit nighter is it, it, it starts at 9 o'clock, correct? It's yes, nine o'clock starts takeoff. at 9. And so for me, when I've done some of these other rides last year training for the EXL, you start off there in the sunlight in the afternoon or the late afternoon either, and it's really nice and warm. But when that sun goes down, man, that temperature, you don't realize how quickly it drops too. And so starting at 9 o'clock, you're already kind of in that low temperature Mm -hmm. range. And I think that would be, at least as me as a rider, would be a huge benefit heading out into that where you're not saying, oh, hey, it's you know June. I know the event's been in July, sometimes early July before too as well oh, we're going to head out and it's going to be 95 degrees and then we're going to drop you down to 60 overnight. Uh, Because that 60, even though we'd all go out and ride in shorts, you know, at 60. It feels like 40. After doing that, yeah, it feels miserable. And so um, I think it's a nice, as a rider, thing to say, hey, we're starting when it's already 9 o'clock and hopefully cooling down. But it is June in Kansas after all, so... Well, it was funny about that first year, and I didn't. it Mm -hmm. didn't really weigh in until like the week of. I mean, I knew because you plan, you plan, you plan, but it didn't weigh in. You're like, oh, wait a minute. I have to stay up all night, too. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if someone wrecks in the middle of the night, I got to be there for them. So that was like, oh, no, I still got to stay up all night for this thing. And I got about two hours of sleep the first year. It wasn't great sleep. It was on a cot in the starting area. And then last year, I actually rented a and b and I went back and got three and a half hours of sleep um because i have people who can help cover so but yeah it was, it was like oh no hey i did it to myself i'd rather be on a bike and, and i bet that's probably a struggle too especially up there because i mean we've all ridden up there before and we've done mazies before and we know riding up there tends to lead to a lot of hey come pick me up calls because yeah. it's not easy so when you mentioned earlier about trying to keep the race around 300 my thought is 
that's less people that you have to worry about that's picking exactly up because my right. guess is up there you've experienced more people looking for pickups percentage wise probably than yes. you do at, at we Flint have Hills. been incredibly blessed the first two years with temperatures last year we actually had and remember last mm-hmm. year was july 7th mm-hmm. 8th yeah we had people sitting in hoodies in the morning yeah it was, it was, it was so chilly, chilly that morning one of these years yeah we're gonna get oh, yeah. hit with triple digits and, and 80 overnight and humidity and that's gonna be a rough time for that, everybody that first year yeah. was a little bit warm but it wasn't terrible especially because we had plenty of aid stations and the gas yeah. stations along the way and and when yeah. we hit that last gas station there um i think the valero or whatever yeah. it is Man, I, I went in and I got an ice cream and I got myself a cold Sprite. So that I got is cold everything. <laughs> and then I got back on the bike and just felt great passing all these people that didn't stop to cool down. Yeah. So that is one thing we do different there. We have as much water on the course as we can put on the course. Every Jeep's got a five gallon bucket. I mean, we, I understand. I'm yeah. a rider too. Yeah, so. so, registration, is it still open for Rock Ridge? Can people still Registration get in? is very open for Rock Ridge. Um, it's at rockridgegravel.com. And there's a link there that'll take you to the weird URL. Um, and uh, yeah, it's open till day of. So okay. June 29th is this year. Okay, so real quick then, we're kind of wrapping up with your events throughout the year. We've got Tricks and Trails out at uh, Ryan Balkenhall's place. Tricks and Trails is a lot of fun. It's not your typical. So I know this won't mean anything to a lot of your viewers, but um, uh, the Lawrence River Trails mm-hmm. are nice and smooth and flowy, and there's not much technical about them, but you can go fast, right? Mm-hmm. So you can make mistakes and still wreck. Um, I would say that our local trails are a smoother version of that, um, but they still have quite a bit of uh, – If you're, you can get going fast enough where I would say they're technical in a different way. Mm-hmm. Um, if you don't handle the curves well, going into the curves well, then yeah, they, they can be a little, a, a little hard that way. But if you're just out there cruising, anybody can ride them. They're, they're made that way on purpose because mm-hmm. they're for our local NICA team. And we have a lot of people who have never ridden a trail bike in their life. So you start off slow and easy and then you can gear up and, and they're a lot of fun. They're, that's about a three mile loop. I think right now, mm-hmm. I think he's building more into it. And basically we set you up for about an hour, an hour and 15 minute ride. So it's an hour and hour, 15 minute race is what it is. Yeah. Well, we were out there this year and everybody sure had a fun time and raising money for the local. Yeah. It's a lot of fun. Hot dogs, grill out chips, that kind of stuff. And it's in the fall. So the weather's great. We have it Halloween, right? The weekend right before Halloween. So I tend to go overboard on, 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 uh, decorations for the trails and stuff like that. So it's fun. Okay. Well, thanks so much for coming on the show again, Bobby. You're welcome anytime. I mean, you spent the first five years here, so <laughs> yeah, the room looks familiar. So it, it really hasn't, <laughs> hasn't changed, changed much in here. Probably, <laughs> probably hasn't been cleaned up too no, much since no. since then. So, <laughs> but thanks again, and thanks for everything you're doing with Discover Gravel here in the area. Thanks, guys. Thanks so much. As always, it's great having Bobby back on the show. He spent five years here, and really, him and Leland in those first few seasons helped me get the show to Gravel Guru off the ground. So, always great having Bobby, and it's great seeing what he's doing for the community and the local riding. Yeah, no, it's it's absolutely awesome. I mean, again, we had a blast up there this past weekend. Me and Lane ran because uh, my wife and daughter were out of town, and so... The little guy could probably have taken on the 30 miler, but he also loves running and I'm trying to do a little bit more running. Um, and so we ran the 6k together and he did great for the first mile and a half. He was in second place overall. I mean, he was doing good out there. Absolutely having a blast. Uh, we ran in a little bit of issues, but, uh, we still had a fun run together. Um, and it was good to get to hang out afterwards yeah. too. We got to get, hang out long enough to see the, uh, 30 milers come in in the front of that 30 mile uh, pack they they went out there flying and they came in flying mm-hmm. and it, it you know if you want something that's just a nice short you know hour and 45 minute you know like fast paced race mm-hmm. that's it because i mean those boys were, and girls were flying i mean they were they were going fast you know bobby didn't really talk about this but i think i'm i'm safe saying it the nice thing about flint hills gravel and what it does is here in our local community, we have a massive event that is Huge. the Super Bowl of this sport, and it's amazing and love everything about it. That can be scary as a first-time event rider. Yeah, I mean, you, you I've done those rollouts. You, you know, you, yeah. you do those rollouts, and you've got people thousands all up and down the street cheering you on. Yes, and hundreds and thousands of people around you. You know, the 200 or the 100 can be int- intimidating just because of the distance, but even rolling out on a 50 or a 25, yeah. You're not rolling out with you and a group of buddies on a on a small group ride. You're still rolling out with hundreds of people mm-hmm. on the 25 and 50, and it can be intimidating. And I mean, even yeah. you know, we we got there for the the rollout of the the 30, 
Um, there was still oh my folks gosh. rolling out his event. I for think that. I, mean, I think he huge. told me there were like three hundred and fifty, maybe. Yeah. Like, and it was a lot of people. And what I mean by my statement there, like letting uh, beginners into it a little bit more, is like I have to remember back my first gravel ride was the Opie Down Home Days, I believe, in two thousand eight. And there were 14 of us. <laughs> like, we, every group ride we do for the most part now on a weeknight is bigger than oh, yeah. what events were. We, we had more than 14 last night on, on Winston at Worlds. I mean, it, we had way so, more than 14. You know, so. it's just a great way to get started and use it to maybe test yourself, see where you're at, ready for the big events and whatnot. And quite frankly, Bobby's event is a big event now. Yeah, it is. Absolutely. I mean, 750 the last two years, you know, 750 plus mm-hmm. the last two years registered for it. So, I mean, he's mm-hmm. he's grown that event huge in the four yeah. years. We talked a little bit about that. I know he wants to keep that number there, but I also think that Bobby is the kind of person that um, if people want to come ride his gravel and ride his event, he'll mm-hmm. try to find ways to make make it happen and one of the great things about bobby with it is you can tell he's doing it for the right reasons and his heart is in it oh yeah like he wants to put on a great event he wants to make sure every participant has a great time at this event while they're here and and i'll say that so going back to the first year of the event you know that was just after covid uh it was just that i mean 2021 yeah, yeah, yeah april 2021 was that first event happened and it ran smoothly. It ran well. He cared about the event and the way that it took place and the way that everything went down. And then uh, getting out there that second year uh, was also a year that I ended up running uh, with my son, but we got to see that same kind of execution. Uh, and we did hang around and got to, you know, witness uh, people coming in for the ride. And then uh, being out there as a rider finally in the third year um, and doing that 120 mile adventure. Um, you know, there were times that I was looking down at my cue sheets wondering what in the world Bobby's doing to me. Uh, but he absolutely made sure we were taken care of. I mean, he mm-hmm. put the right distances exactly needed between spots for us to stop so that you could carry what you needed. You could get to that next spot. You could refuel. You mm-hmm. could get back on the bike. You could get to that next spot. And um, I, I, it worked flawlessly. It was great. I know he talked about it in the ultra segment there for a minute about talking about the amount of miles driving. Like, if you follow him on Instagram and whatnot and truly get to know him, I don't think people realize how many times he drives his courses. He, he, Bobby posts more driving uh, content than he posts riding content nowadays, if you notice. Yeah. I mean, and that's nothing against Bobby. I mean, I know he does his riding still, and he's out yeah. there riding with us on Worlds, but he's always out there mm-hmm. driving the course, driving the roads, finding new roads. Well, and um, talking to the locals, talking, talking to the farmers, the ranchers, all of that out there, trying to make things the best for everybody out there as possible. Yeah, and so he, he does. He puts a lot of care and attention, uh, not just into Flint Hills Gravel, but to, to his other events as well, and it, and it shows mm-hmm. 100%. So we've kind of been looking in the rearview beer, kind of what's been going on with Flint Hills Gravel. It's time to kind of shift gears. We're headed. It's kind of the five, six-week sprint to uh, Unbound Gravel here in Emporia. Yeah, it's coming quick. Um, I, like I said, I've, I've got uh, some events on my calendar coming up. I've got LaGrind coming up. I'm really, really thinking about doing L-Rods. I've said that probably for about four or five years now. Uh, but L-Rods, Bobby talked about, um, I believe, there in a little bit. Uh, the event down in Winfield uh, that takes place every year. and It's been taking place, it seems like, probably... Because I remember L-Rods being around when I first got oh, into yeah. cycling in yeah. 2014. So I'm sure it's been around for even longer than that. It, um, it's been around for a long time. And so I, I really, really want to get down there because I need, I feel like, a couple of these events to kind of build into the Coast to Coast at the end mm-hmm. of June. Uh, I'm not worried about building into Unbound. Unbound for me is 25 miles with my son, and we're going to go out and we're going to have a blast. And it's going to be great, and we're going to have a wonderful time. But I'm not training for Unbound like I would be in previous years. And so... Really, my focus here over the next six weeks and really the next two months leading into Coast to Coast is getting in a handful of races, whether, like I say, the grind will be one of them, maybe L-Rods, uh, maybe I'll try to find some others, but making sure that I'm kind of have race-ready legs, because I've only done one race so far this year, and that was uh, Dirty South back at the beginning of March. Yeah. So, Fair enough. Uh, for me, getting ready for Unbound is more uh, getting ready to produce some content. I'm looking forward to helping people out. And with that said, my goal, my goal, no promises. We're about five weeks out right now is an episode here in the studio every week leading up to unbound. But with that said, with that said, make sure you email, drop us comments, send us a message on Instagram and let us know what questions you have. I have lived in the Flint Hills every year of my life. Neil's been here for 10, 15 years. We've rode these roads a lot and sometimes we forget what we know. 
Yeah, you know, that's, that's, I mean, I, every year I get tons of questions. People drop into the Instagram, send me DMs, and I try to respond to all of them. I know sometimes I miss them, but we have absolutely no problem covering that stuff here. Yeah. Uh, because, and rehashing stuff. We've done this for nine years, but we have a lot of new people watching. Well, yeah. I mean, I, I, I remember talking to people that were doing the XL or coming down last year for the 200 even and just appreciating the amount of information we had about the roads. And again, last year in training, not knowingly, but I had ridden most of the XL and the 200 course and had experienced those roads. Obviously, the 100 course we're pretty familiar with because anything that's within that 100-mile range, we usually ride at some point or another. Um, and so we do have a lot of knowledge on the roads. We do, I would say, tend to know. Not saying that all of them are going to be perfect choices, but what tires <laughs> tend to hold up a little bit better. We have opinions um, on tires. Yeah, and so um, I, I would say that if you got a question, ask. Like, yeah. don't be afraid. We will bike get tech, to it. nutrition, tires, roads. What to do when you're in town? Not racing. Like, we got a lot of information. So, thanks so much for following along in this episode. We're happy to be back in the studio. It's nice doing video. It, it kind of feels like the old days right now. Does so. 2019 all over again, baby? Woo. Right. So, anyways, going forth with it. Make sure you follow us, like us on social media, send us a comment. Any questions you have, if it's a longer question, shoot me an email, Matt at gravelguru.com. And thanks for watching.